compassionate, mindful inquiry in therapeutic practice. I've written it for people who are already delivering mindfulness and compassion practices uh, or training to do so in any sector. Uh, because inquiry is such an important part of the work that we do. Uh, we teach a practice and that's not the end of it. We use inquiry to be able to really dig deep into what happened during the practice and looking at patterns of behaviour, um, catastrophizing, ruminations, whatever's arising, because whatever arises in a practice will be reflected in our daily life. So I've developed a model that looks at the relationship between mindfulness and compassion to support people who find inquiry really quite difficult. This model has a variety of stages, three stages in fact, and six processes arising from those stages. And it's really helpful to recognise that teaching mindfulness first is important to be able to start to lay the foundations to bring in compassion. So by paying attention, by building awareness, reflecting on how it is to pay attention and become more aware, we can deepen into our understanding of ourselves. Compassion is wise action. What can you do with that rawness and that vulnerability? Well, you can bring in self-soothing, self-kindness. And the more we become kind and self-compassionate for ourselves, the more authentically we can be compassionate to other people and create sustainable changes within our lives. We're not working in isolation, but we have much of our work being researched by City University of London. And the researcher is called Dr. Trudy Edgington, and she's actually written a chapter in my book about the neuroscience of mindfulness and compassion. Mm -hmm.